Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 31st of May, uh, nearly halfway through the year already. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. Some new videos, just a refresher that last week was obviously the build special, so that was a very long update. So if you haven't caught up on what was announced to build, there was a huge amount announced, uh, go and check that out. And I also did a video on the new Azure Storage Actions, the ability to centrally define rules where I may have potentially lots of different data sets in a particular data lake that I want more flexible control at massive scale. Or maybe I just have lots of different silos of data in different storage accounts, but I want to be able to centrally define rules and apply them. So I went through what we can do with Azure Storage Actions. On to what's new on the compute side. So hibernation for virtual machines has gone GA. So this is where I want to stop paying for the compute of the virtual machine without losing the state of the virtual machine, i.e. the memory, the processor state. So that state is saved to the operating system disk and then it can deallocate. So I stop paying the compute charges, but then when you start it, it will resume from that hibernated state. So it will be just as you left it off. I do obviously have to have durable storage then. I can't use ephemeral OS drives. I wouldn't be able to do Hibernate for that. And it's available for my general purpose virtual machines, the DB5s, the EV5s, up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. For the GPU SKUs, it's available in preview. But this will be really nice if I want to maybe, for virtual desktops, I want to stop paying that compute, but the user doesn't want to lose where they are. But also if I want to pre-warm up virtual machines so that if I have to scale out and start them, well, it's available that much quicker to do its job. AKS Advanced Container Networking Services is available in preview. Now this is going to be a suite of services that sit on top of existing network solutions that are aimed to address various complex scenarios around observability, security, compliance. Now, this is only available for Kubernetes 1.29 and above clusters. And the first feature they're releasing is the advanced network observability in preview. Now, this is going to work for both Cilium and non-Cilium Linux data planes, and it's built on the Hubble control plane. So what that means is you think about the Hubble metrics, the Hubble command line interface, the Hubble user interface. I'm going to now have that on my AKS clusters as this managed solution. So it's going to give me that deeper insight into the networking on my AKS cluster and those containerized workloads. So if I want to maybe be able to detect exactly what's happening, what's the root cause of some networking issue, it's going to give me that monitoring, the diagnostic tooling to do this. And my understanding is these will be paid offerings uh, in the future. They also added the support in AKS that I can now, from the overview pane in the portal, just link it to an Azure Container Registry. And currently in the bottom right corner, it talks about container registries and I can just link. So it makes it super easy. So it's really a quality of life thing to make it easier to link to my Azure Container Registries from AKS. And then Container Insights has been enhanced. So there's enhanced metadata. So if we think about that uh, container log v2 schema they introduced, which was nice that I could use basic logs because everything was in one table. So they've added additional things like the pod labels, the pod annotations, the pod uh, UID, the image, image ID, the image repo, image tag. So that data is now all available in there so I can leverage that through my insights. They also added these color coded severity uh, levels for my applications, critical error warning to help better understand the state of my application health more simply. And then they added log filtering. So what I can now do for the workload and platform, think the various namespaces like the system namespace logs, as they come out of the containers, I can now filter which ones I want to actually go into my workspace. Obviously I pay for the data ingested and then the data stored if I keep it beyond the included time span. So I can now filter what is sent so I can control my spending a little bit more on that. Then there's a Grafana dashboard uh, for that visualization. And then Azure VMware Solution has licensed portability 
for your VMware Cloud Foundation. So if I've purchased VMware Cloud Foundation, I've been using it on-premises, for example, well, now I can take that licensing and apply it to my Azure VMware solution. So it just helps you be a lot more flexible. So I've made that commitment. I've purchased this solution. I can still go and use those licenses now for the Azure hosted, managed uh, VMware solution. On the networking side, so Azure Firewall is available in new regions, Israel Central, Italy North, Mexico Central, and Spain Central. And there's been some enhancements to the load balancer. So the Azure load balancer now has health event logs in preview. So this is a new log category. You'll see this load balancer health event, and it can help me identify some key types of load balancer problem. So for example, there's traffic distribution, warning and critical events. It will show me if my snap pool is approaching 75% exhaustion or is totally exhausted. It can show me if there's no healthy backends. So it's gonna make it easier to alert based on these things and also see my health status. They've also added an admin state in preview. So ordinarily, the health of the backend, members of the backend set, is based on health probes. Hey, can I talk to it? And then if I wanted to do some planned maintenance, well, I have to manipulate that. Maybe I block a certain pool, I use an NSG to restrict it. Well, now I don't have to. With the admin state, I can override whatever signal the health probe is saying. So if I wanted to do a maintenance, for example, on a backend set member, well, I can just basically remove it from, I can say, hey, it's not available. And it will stop sending new connections to it. Or I could say, hey, I want traffic to go to it, even maybe if the health probe isn't. So it's on a per backend set member, I can go and override the up or down state, regardless of what the health probe is telling it. And then Azure Virtual Network Manager, which we think about as a connectivity management. So I can define, hey, the connectivity between uh, the spoke and my hubs, or I could do full mesh. It thinks about the security admin rules, which are rules applied before NSG, so I can allow traffic, deny traffic, or always allow traffic and bypass any NSGs. Well, now it has this virtual network verifier. So with this, it gives me that ability to say, hey, would my network policies allow or deny this traffic between my various network resources? So, hey, it can answer that question, why are these things not able to talk? And um, that will solve that for me. On the storage side, so these are all about Azure NetApp files. So now I have this application volume group for Oracle. So if I want to use Azure NetApp files to host the storage for my Oracle database, there's multiple volumes I have to configure. What this does is in a single atomic operation, it sets up all of the volumes required to install Oracle at enterprise scale to the best practices. Now it can create them in the same AZ as the VM, so it's smart enough to understand what it should be doing. There's up to eight data volumes, and each volume can support multi-hundred uh, terabyte sizes of database. Also, they now have introduced large volumes. So it's different from the standard volumes. I have to select this when I create it, and I can't convert a standard to a large volume. But now, I can create these volumes. Instead of being 100 uh, tebibyte maximum, I can create up to 500 tebibytes. So it's between 50 and 500. It supports cross-zone and cross-region replication if I want it. It's limited regions today, but there are more planned for it. So if I think about those scenarios like high-performance computing, some AI scenarios, or I just need a really large content repository, I can now go and create these, uh, these special large volumes uh, to support that. Azure NetApp Files Backup has gone to GA. So this is where it's going to take the snapshot and it's going to put it in Azure Storage so I can offload into my vault those snapshots, um, obviously from a price perspective and also maybe keeping it for a much longer retention. And then another Azure NetApp Files. Now I can configure the Active Directory connection that it requires for certain features at an account level. So instead of having to set it at this um, entire sort of the subscription shares this configuration at a certain region, now for each of my accounts, I can have a different Active Directory that is gonna go and use for its authentication. On the database side, so graph semantics in Kusto has gone GA. So remember graphs are all about relationships. 
I think about my various entities and what is the relationship between those entities. So I could think that, okay, well, there's there's John, I am a certain node, and then there's Julie, another node, and there's a relationship between them. Julie is John's boss. So that relationship is an edge. And if, when I have applications that focus on relationships between things, like Facebook would be a good example of that, well, a graph database is ideal to quickly understand those relationships. So what this lets me do is define a graph representation built on top of the regular Cousteau structure that's then populated in memory so I can then do those uh, graph queries against it. The Azure HD Insight on AKS is available in six new regions. So we talked about this previously. So the HD Insight on AKS is enabling, and I think it's part of the Go Forward strategy. This is the modern way to get that Apache Spark, uh, Apache Flink, Trino, without managing the containers yourself. So now it's Norway East, Switzerland North, France Central, Central US, Southeast Asia, and South Central US. Uh, I can now deploy that. And Log Analytics Simple Mode is available in Preview. So ordinarily, I think about using Kusto. And Kusto is amazing, it's got huge flexibility, but obviously there's a certain amount of skill I require. So we can have this new view that it's gonna offer you, and you'll see this little drop down. it's like, hey, do you wanna use simple mode? So in simple mode, I just select the table I want to look at, and then it's gonna automatically run the query. But what I can do is I could change the time range, I could change the limit, I could add a filter. So I could just go and say, hey, look, a level, um, warning, apply, and it will now automatically go and rerun the query for those bits of information. I could go and add another one. So I don't have to know anything about Kusto, but it's gonna go and make that much, much simpler for me to go and interact with. So that's the whole point uh, of that solution. And then miscellaneous, uh, Azure Site Recovery Reporting is in preview. So if I think about the site recovery reports, give me historical information on the various jobs and the replicated items. There's also the ability to see and understand the replication from um, Azure to Azure, um, VMware replication to Azure, both classic and modernized. I do require a log analytics workspace and I have to set up the diagnostic settings to send the events to the workspace uh, so I can run those reports. Obviously there's a, there's a cost implication for using the log analytics workspace. They also have integrated with Azure Monitor. So there were the classic native Azure site recovery alerts, but now it's gonna surface those alerts in Azure Monitor. So replication health going unhealthy, agent issues, failures of replication, etc. And now it's just in standard Azure Monitor, I can use standard monitor Azure Monitor alerts. So of all the flexibility, I can call a webhook, I can hook into my ITSM system to create a ticket, I can notify people, I can run a function, all of those wonderful action group things to trigger when alerts happen. Activity log alerts, I can now define in the EU data boundary. So if that matters to me, if I need to make sure the metadata and the processing of a log alert happens within the EU data boundary, well now when I create my activity log alert rule, I can specify North Europe or West Europe to make sure I'm in that EU data boundary instead of using the default global region. Chaos Studio has a new pause process fault for Windows virtual machines. So this is agent-based. And remember, Chaos Studio is all about creating these experiments to introduce different types of failure. And it's actually doing the failure. It's not simulating the failure. It's making the effect happen to so be careful in production. But to make sure, well, have I architected correctly to handle those types of failures? So now what it can do is it can go and pause processes via the agent in my Windows VMs for a certain period of time. And so that will help me ensure, well, hey, have maybe what detections I've got in place, am I resilient to that as part of my automated testing? And then finally, action groups now support group-based assignment notifications where I have an RBAC role as the target for notification. And this is actually huge to me. So when I think about alerting and notifying on things, rather than having to specify people or specific groups, 
often our different subscriptions have different groups given a role. And what would be really nice, for example, is to say, hey, anyone who's a contributor, when I get this type of maybe service help alert, notify anyone who is a contributor. And we had this in the past, that you can notify arm roles, our back roles, but it would only work if the individual was given the role. And that's not our best practice. Best practice is we put people into groups, we give groups the role. So what this change does is now, even if it's a group assigned the R back role, let's say contributor, and I say, hey, I notify contributors as the target for this, it will now mail the individuals within the group um, who are part of that. So that, that's a, a really nice uh, new capability. And that was it. Uh, so a nice selection of updates this week. As always, till next video, take care.